Hi, I'm Randy Briggs, manager of the Research and Development Center for CarQuest Technical Institute here in Raleigh, North Carolina. By now, you've seen Advanced Driver Assist Systems, or ADIS, on TV and trade publications, maybe even your own shop. You might even own an ADIS equipped vehicle. Now these can take the form of lane departure assist, blind spot warning, adaptive cruise control, or any combination of the myriad of system types out there. Many of these subsystems share sensing technology like forward facing cameras, short and long range radar, and ultrasonic sensors. Even if you don't directly repair ADIS system problems yet, there are many services commonly done today in the repair and collision industry that affect the operation of ADIS sensing accuracy and the resulting performance of the safety systems. For example, anytime a vehicle has had a bumper cover or grill removed and reinstalled, an ADIS system sensor may need to be aligned and calibrated. Whether it's a collision repair, a windshield replacement, the factory repair information should always be consulted to determine the appropriate repair procedures for the specific vehicle that you're servicing. ADIS calibrations are necessary to protect your customers as well as other drivers on the road. As service professionals, we need to have an understanding of how these systems operate and how repairs and maintenance can affect the accuracy of a modern ADIS system. Today we'll be calibrating a forward-facing camera on this 2018 Toyota Camry LE. Typically the forward-facing camera, or FFC, is used as the primary sensing technology for lane departure warning and lane keep assist. But there are some exceptions to this. OEMs like Toyota also require the forward-facing radar to be operational for the forward-facing camera to work properly, even though they state that the forward-facing radar is used for adaptive cruise control, not lane departure. In many GM models, the forward-facing camera is used for adaptive cruise control and lane departure, but these vehicles do not have a radar sensor on board. Because of the many variances of ADIS technology between manufacturers, it's critical that you refer to factory service information for the vehicle that you are working on, even though it may be the same year, make, or model. Calibration of the forward-facing camera is required whenever the camera or module is replaced or the camera is repositioned. Windshield replacement also requires a camera recalibration by most manufacturers. Even changes that do not directly affect the camera require calibration. For example, changes in alignment that change thrust angle or ride height absolutely require that the forward-facing camera be calibrated. To put this in perspective, one degree of change in thrust angle will deviate the forward-facing camera or forward-facing radar by about 63 inches at 100 yards. Since most OEs reference the center line of the body, it's assumed that thrust angle is correct. If you have any doubt, perform an alignment first. Today, the tools and equipment that are needed for ADIS calibration can vary from the simple to the very complex, depending upon the vehicle. The very first thing you should have in your hand is current accurate service information for the specific vehicle that you're working on. This example is from Toyota. One document dated in April, the other dated in July, even though they explain the exact same process on the exact same year, make, model car. From there, you need a capable scan tool that has the ability to perform those calibrations. Remember that the scan tool is only issuing a function call to the module in charge. The calibration process is built into the module software. Vehicles that require targets are known as static calibration vehicles. Most European and Asian imports are like this. If no targets are needed, only a scan tool function in a test drive, that's known as dynamic calibration, and that includes most domestics. If your vehicle needs a target, that target has to be the right size, the right shape, the right contrast, and the right surface texture. Manufacturers like Toyota will give you a PDF of the target to print out in their service information. Target options include aftermarket and OE targets. No matter what the source, target placement is the critical aspect of calibration. On the simpler side of the toolbox are tools used for finding vehicle centerline. That can include plumb bobs, tape measure, markers, tapes, even a laser level. Last but not least, you need enough bay area 
to perform the calibration. That can be as large as sometimes 35 feet, depending on the OE. It has to have even lighting, no contrasting areas behind the target, and no bright windows behind the target. Prepping the vehicle for the calibration process can include things like finding the center line, distance to target, even cleaning the windshield. In addition, some OEs require that the fuel tank be at a minimum level for exact ride height and tire pressure affects that too. Although most service information documents don't require this, a best practice is to start by doing an all-module DTC scan just to make sure there's no underlying problems. From there, your preparation should be step-by-step -step from the service information for your car. Keep in mind that these documents are continuously updated, so don't use the one you printed out six months ago just because you have the same car in your bay today. We'll show you how Toyota calibrates the forward-facing camera on this 2018 Camry we have in the shop today. First, we're going to confirm that the target area is clear of distracting objects or contrasty light, things like windows behind the target that will confuse the camera. We're going to check the floor level at three points, two in the front of the vehicle and one at the rear. Then check the tire inflation, ride height, loads in the trunk, anything that will affect the attitude of the car. And if necessary, consult the factory service information for specific procedures. We'll print the target from Toyota's service information. Make sure the printed size of the target meets Toyota's specifications. Mount the target to a stable stand. Don't use scotch tape on the face of the target because the camera will see that. Use double-sided tape to mount the target. Set the target height at 1350 millimeters from the center of the target to the floor. Find the center line of the vehicle using a plumb bob from the center line of the vehicle emblems front and rear. Working at the front of the vehicle, draw a center line extending at least 2.2 meters to the front of the vehicle. You can use a chalk line to do this, but we'll be using a laser as described in a recent Toyota Tech Tip. Next, we're going to refer to the diagram in Toyota service information to mark the proper spots on the floor for target placement. Point B to point C should be 267 millimeters. Point B to D, 1937. We're going to plot two arcs with a thousand millimeter radius. Draw the first arc using point C as a reference point and the second arc using point D as a reference point. The arc should intersect on either side of the center line. Those intersections form points J and G. Now draw a 90 degree line from point J to point G. Confirm J to the center line and G to the center line are both 550 millimeters. These points will be used as the second and third target placement spots. Next, we're going to position our target at the point where the center line and the 90 degree intersect, being careful that the target remains perpendicular to the center line. 
Now enter scan tool functions. After identifying the vehicle, including all of the details about that particular model, check measurement memory. We're at our ATIS menu, so we're going to go ahead and select front recognition camera. We'll establish communication. And the first thing we need to do is select a reason that this camera is going to be calibrated. Uh, since this is a demo, we're just going to select replace windshield and click on OK. The scan tool is going to give you the Autel part numbers uh, to calibrate this system, even though right now we're using Toyota style targets. Next step is to determine whether or not we're going to use this on a raised surface like a lift or we're going to do it on a floor. We're going to do our vehicle on a floor so we'll select A. Next we're going to continue some preparations. We're going to perform the measurement on a level surface which we've already checked and the calibration should be performed in a windless environment according to the scan tool prompts. We'll click on OK. There's some other preparations that we have already done in order to make this calibration successful. We'll click on OK. A couple more warnings. We'll click on OK again. And we'll have some help screens that relate to the Autel targeting system. We'll click on OK. And we'll, attack, we'll make sure our target board is uh, positioned in the center position. Click on OK right now. And click on OK again to get past those help screens and then we're going to confirm that the engine isn't running and the ignition is on and we also want to make sure that we have a fully charged battery even though this is a relatively short process. Click on next and now we're going to compare some of the values that are in the memory of the system with some of the values that are uh, in service information. So recognition camera height is at 1284, 1284 in the scan tool. Um, lateral position is zero, which matches service information. Yaw angle is zero, which matches service information. And the recognition camera installation pitch value is uh, 0.98 degrees, which is negative, which is in the service information also. So we're going to click on OK. If they didn't match service information, you'd make some changes on that screen. Now, we're going to actually adjust or calibrate the camera, so we'll click on OK. And now the first thing it will do is give us the remainder of the list of values that are stored in memory, so verify that they're correct, and they are. We'll click on OK again. The first thing we'll do is make sure our target is positioned in the center, and we'll hit Next. There's a beep in the car, so we know that the the process has been initiated. Okay. Next thing we want to do is move our target to the left, that 550 millimeters that we measured previously. Okay, we have a total of three minutes to position these targets, so it's not a horrible rush. We're going to click on Next. And now we're going to wait for the next prompt. The next prompt says to slide the target all the way to the right, that 550 millimeters from center. And now that that's complete, we'll hit next. Multiple beeps inside the car. And now our recognition camera axis adjustment is complete. As you can see, we've successfully performed a forward-facing camera calibration on this 2018 Camry. To conclude this process, we recommend that you perform a vehicle health check or diagnostic scan using your scan tool to confirm that all service issues have been addressed prior to road testing the vehicle. So what do you do if your vehicle fails to calibrate? You've purchased a capable scan tool, dedicated a repair bay, bought a target setup, and positioned the targets exactly the way the manufacturer requested, but your scan tool reported calibration failed. Now what do we do? Well, the first step is to try this calibration a second time. However, if it fails, we need to start considering what's around the vehicle. Does it have a good quality windshield that's been installed properly? 
Does the target have any contrasty backgrounds behind it or uneven lighting? Have you used scotch tape to fasten the target and now the scotch tape reflects into the camera? Is the black square on the target on the upper left and not on the upper right? Look closely at the camera lens. Body shop dust can cover the lens, but the area around the lens and the windshield appear to be clean. This can be hard to see, but it will definitely affect the calibration. Finally, is your scan tool software and VCI firmware fully updated? Don't forget to look at any TSBs for known problems or vehicle software updates. In closing, advanced driver assist system technology and the need for ATA sensor and camera calibration is going to land in your service bay sooner than later. You need to be prepared for this by deciding if you're going to send it to the dealer, have a mobile diagnostics company do the calibration, or your shop is going to train and equip to handle those vehicles in-house. Look at your work mix and make a decision that provides adequate return on investment. You may even want to become the shop that other repair shops and collision sensors refer vehicles to. No matter what your business model, make sure that you have all of your equipment bases covered in regards to scan tools, targets, and bay area, and don't forget to budget for training. And remember, the factory procedures should always be followed for target positioning and successful calibration. Proper calibration is critical in protecting your customers and those sharing the roads with them. And let's not forget limiting your shop's liability. I hope you found this Addis video to be informative. Thanks for watching. I'm Randy Briggs from the CTI Research Center in Raleigh, North Carolina.